Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company accounting lesson. In this video, we will be going over the rate of change analysis, also known as a horizontal analysis for an income statement. So here we have the statement of operations for Jiayong Incorporated. Uh, keep in mind, statement of operations is another term for the income statement. So you might be seeing that as you see some examples of the rate of change analysis in your text. So when we're doing a rate of change analysis, our goal is um, we're going to be going horizontally. So left to right, right? Um, and we are going to be analyzing how much uh, the company's each line item has increased or decreased uh, from one year to another. So in order to do this, the first thing we want to do is we want to find the amount of the increase or decrease. Uh, keep in mind, this is would be the current year. And this is our prior year. So if we're looking at this, we can already see that cash went down. So we can find out by how much by taking our 20x2 amount and minusing out our 20x1 amount. And we see that it decreased by $200,000. Now, instead of leaving it there, though, we want to find a percentage increase or decrease. In this case, decrease. So I'm going to put this in parentheses. So first we're finding the amount of the change. And then to find out how much it increased or decreased, we're basing this off of our prior year. So in our case, 20x1 would be considered our base year. So if we take the prior year and we use that to, uh, we go ahead and we divide the amount of the change by that prior year, we see, let me go ahead and make sure this is formatted correctly, percentage, there we go. We see that this company's service revenue has declined by 9.09% from one year to the other. Um, and we could go ahead and retype in this formula for every single one. But just to make it easier on ourselves, I'm going to use this fill handle here, drag down my formula, and we can see here that the company's sales revenue has gone up by 66.67%. So that's actually quite a significant jump. Let me copy and paste that so I don't lose my, there you go. All right, so um, if we go ahead and we, let's drag this all the way down so we can see how this company has done from one year to another. And then I'm going to delete all of my zeros. Clean it up a bit. There we go. Now we can see how this company is really doing. So uh, for example, one area that we usually see with these types of problems is we will see an area saying, okay, revenue went up. This is amazing. We have a 7.14% increase in revenues. But when we go down to our net income, we are seeing, okay, but, but... Uh, net income actually declined by 23.08%. So what a company might do is kind of see which of our expenses went up so significantly that they caused such an amazing uh, decline here. Uh, so right off the bat, we can kind of see, and this is a little bit of a uh, exaggerated example, but we can see that this company's cost of sales revenues, their cost of their revenues essentially for that, um, for their sales revenue, uh, you can cost a good sold, uh, went up by 70.73%. So I don't know what's going on with this company's inventory. Perhaps um, materials are a lot more expensive. Again, this is kind of an exaggerated example, but the company could see, okay, there's a huge increase there. Uh, one thing that I do want to caution you on every once in a while is if you do have, if you're doing this in Excel, of course, if you do have any parentheses. So like for example here, notice that this went from 19,000 to 22,000. It is in parentheses, but it's just in parentheses because it's an expense. Always kind of check if it goes from a parentheses to a positive. In this case, we have a pretty good scenario because uh, it went from 19,000, positive by the way, our expenses went from 19,000 for interest expense to 22,000 in interest expense. So it is an increase, right? So we're seeing an increase here. So just go through and check and make sure. Um, for some, in some scenarios, if you see that something went from a positive number to a negative number, it's not really doing anything for the, um, the person who is reading uh, the information, right? 
So for example, if we went from a net loss of 50,000 and we went to a um, net income of 100,000, it, would, it wouldn't read correctly in there. So let me just kind of show you. Net loss of 50,000 to net income of 100,000. So here it's telling us that our net income declined by 300%, which we know is incorrect. We went from net loss to net income. That's a good thing, it's not a decline. Um, the reason for this is because of um, negatives and positives. In this case, if you have 100,000 and you're minusing out a negative 50,000, it's trying to kind of change that to a positive number. So just be aware of that. Sometimes that can occur when you are doing a rate of change analysis. Another thing to be aware of is when we go from a balance of zero to a full balance. In this case, we can't really divide by zero. So this might be one where you would put non-applicable or maybe even C notes so that you can kind of say, we, um, we had a gain on a sale of land. Um, this isn't something, this isn't something that we expect to, um, occur every accounting period. So it's probably a non-recurring item here. So, uh, you would go ahead and just kind of leave a note and tell the user of this report exactly why uh, it went from zero to 98,000. Um, opposite is, is true if we went from 98,000 to zero and you see like a negative 100%, so a balance to nothing. Um, you can just go ahead and say, um, for example, let's say that there was, a, again, on the income statement, if we saw that, we would kind of just assume, okay, we want something happened in one period, it didn't happen in the other. Perhaps we have a cost up here for a... Um, area of our operations that we don't no longer do. So things like that can happen. Just be very cautious when you're doing these. Um, check your zeros, check your negatives, make sure that everything is coming out correctly on this right hand side as you go through. Okay, uh, next we're going to do a rate of change analysis for a balance sheet. It works exactly the same way. Um, so I will just go ahead just for, you know, for to make sure that we understand exactly what a rate of change analysis is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that in a separate video, but until then, um, happy studying. Thank you so much for watching.